Tour time. 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 Welcome to this segment of Tour time. What is up, gamers? It's nice to see you all again. I'm sorry I didn't make a Tory Time video last week. Um, hopefully this will make up for it. But um, this is Chongus. Um, he's gonna go upstairs in a minute because he's a little hungry. But if you listen to the podcast, this is a little, this is a little buddy I was talking about. So today, basically, we're going to be talking about the Invictus film that was posted in the classroom with uh, Morgan Freeman and Matt Damon and all those good actors and stuff. You know, it's it's about the story of Mandela after he came out of prison and how he unified South Africa. And so what we're going to be doing is a semiotic analysis of the film, which is where we're going to take apart, you know, metaphors and analogies and all that type of stuff and really just decipher what it means. So the first one I want to talk about is the very initial scene where white kids are playing rugby on one field and black kids are playing on another field and there's a road that divides in between them and they're split up. So the road that runs between these two groups acts as a clear barrier that is showing who's um, experiencing poverty and in what way. And basically it's supposed to represent the, 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 the deep-rooted segregation in South Africa. And you can obviously tell this, especially knowing the context that we have, is that the Black South African population was being oppressed against and misrepresented economically speaking. So then Mandela's car drives on this road after he's leaving prison. So what is this supposed to represent? Well, I would see it as it's foreshadowing and symbolizes that Mandela was destined to eventually unify the two sides, you know, both the black and white South African people. And that's what I understood that first scene to be. So then we move into the setting of Mandela's office, right? And there's very clear discomfort being expressed in the building. So Mandela calls a meeting, obviously not ignorant to the discomfort around him, and addresses everyone in front of him. He makes a point not to fire any of the white representatives that had worked for the previous president. And as much as most of the black South African population had wanted, uh, he let that he let them keep their jobs, obviously. Now the black South African population had wanted um, a complete shift of power rather than sharing it with the whites. So Mandela in that situation was playing more of a mediator. So this white bodyguard team joins Mandela's team of personal bodyguards. And the tension between the two groups is very, very obvious in the beginning. Jason, the lead bodyguard of Mandela's team, is very, very furious and insinuates even to say that Mandela had hired the very people that had instituted oppression against the black population to begin with. Which Siler said in the podcast, I believe. And, you know, despite this, Mandela asked Jason to use forgiveness for the weapon that it was and that it could be very, very powerful. And this group of white bodyguards becomes a symbol of Mandela's notable capacity for forgiveness and compassion for all people. He's very, very obvious in his belief that humans are stronger together and hatred can be dismantled through full unification. Now... I hope you had noticed. If you didn't, I'd be a little concerned, but rugby was a very, very big component in this movie. I personally have no idea how rugby works. I got very confused when they were huddled and stuff. You know, sports ball things, right, McGarry? <laughs> anyway, but that's besides the point. Mandela's staff members literally cannot wrap their heads around uh, the reason Mandela pays more attention to rugby, it seems, than he does to foreign policy. And it worries a few of them. But Mandela knows best, so obviously he kept at it. So this develops as Mandela sees rugby as this entity that's supposed to represent the country and its broader unity across racial and political lines. It basically brings together people that would not otherwise agree. And like McGarry said, it's shown specifically in the one scene where the little boy is embraced by the police officers after the World Cup game is won. And with the whole rugby situation, Mandela is essentially trying to motivate the Springboks team to excel in their performance. And this runs parallel to his desire to unite the entire nation and cause people to care for one another, which would ultimately lead to South Africa's prosperity as a whole. So that's the role that rugby played 
very, very simply. Just a little disclaimer, he obviously knew it wasn't going to change the nation, but Mandela knew that it would help as a stepping stone into greater transformation. So this last scene was my favorite because this character had just such a great presence on the screen, and that's Chester Williams. So this, the, the, the scene where the Springboks team is getting off the bus um, is one of particular interest to me. You know, the rugby team was there uh, to coach a clinic for young boys, and they get there and these young boys are are waiting for them very very excitedly and they get off the bus and all of them swarm towards Chester Williams. Now McGarry mentioned their excitement in the matter you know how excited these little boys were to be being to be taught rugby by the very team that was representing the nation but I don't think she touched on the fact that they all flooded towards Chester Williams. Now being the sole black player on the team he is a symbol of black integration in a world of Afrikaners. I'm sorry if I said that wrong I'm not completely sure how to pronounce it. And basically, him being that sole player, he's a symbol for the potential of South Africa to unify. For black and white fans and players to come together in the name of unification. Or rather, the pursuit of unification. Whatever pours your cup of tea. So I've said this word unification quite a bit, and if you didn't pick up on it, it's probably one of the most prominent overarching messages of the movie. There's that, and then there's the the other ways that Mandela wanted to unify his nation, and how he wanted to do it. And one of the tools he heavily depended on was forgiveness. And you know, it's something that seems to have gone very underestimated. And Mandela viewed it as people were underestimating its power. And obviously with the end of the film, there's a very stark contrast between the dynamic of people in the beginning and the dynamic people at the end and how Mandela utilized this weapon of forgiveness and with the goal of unification in mind he and Francois and the rugby team were able to transform the nation so that that dynamic could happen and and transform in the first place so those are four of the biggest symbols that I picked up on in the movie that just from the first time watching it I watched it again after the fact but those were the four that initially grabbed my attention you know the first scene where those two fields were divided you know they have the dynamic between the white bodyguard team and the black bodyguard team and how their relationship develops throughout the movie and the rugby being a symbol of the nation to begin its unification process and chester williams being on that rugby team and representing that integration and i think it's really important to note how mandela uses forgiveness to accomplish all these goals you know He spent 27 years in prison and came out ready to forgive the people who had put him in there. And that's an admirable feat in itself. So for him to utilize that mindset and apply it to 43 million people that that was, was, you know, under and post apartheid is a very, very powerful thing. So when, if, if, when or if you watch the movie again, just look out for those symbolism. I know that Uh, McGarry and and Miller and Siler uh, touched on a lot of those in the podcast, but hopefully those were a little more in-depth or a different view of explanations for them. Yeah, that's all I have. I hope you all have a fantastic day. I hope you enjoyed the video. And until next time, you quarantine cuties, don't make plans, and wash your hands. See ya.